Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, and uh, yes, we're uh, well, we're rolling with this thing, doing the uh, DVD collection here, and uh, what we got here? What we got here? Bam! Sports. Sport. I didn't put an S at the end of that. I'm like, eh, just one sport. What picture we got? There's different fucking things. Look at that. There's a tennis racket and a football. Baseball bat. What else we got there? Boxing gloves. I don't know. That badminton? Ping pong. I don't know. Anyway, so yes, we got sports. Alright, now this is, this, I'm not gonna lie, this is a very piss poor uh, collection. Sport collection. Uh, yes, uh, I will. I know right now I'm gonna get piled off shit. Everyone be like, you know, wrestling's not really a sport. Really, dude, piss off. That's, that's what I'm saying there. Yes, I realize wrestling's fake. I think we all know it is, but it's entertaining and I enjoy it. But I don't know, I have a piss poor wrestling collection too. So, uh, yeah, there's only two other movies. Like after I started doing this, I realized I only have two actual movies in my sport collection. And yeah, you'll notice like in my previous installments, there's a lot of movies that probably could have been sport movies, but I just feel like the emphasis was on other things. Major League, is it a baseball movie? I called it a comedy. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry, it feels more of a comedy. Sandlot, feels more family, you know? Uh, best of the best. I got uh, a movie in here that can, you can make the argument like, well, watch the best of the best over here and this over here. Well, because that felt more action. And I'm not gonna lie, there's one of them out of the two in here that's kind of regrettable. I'm like, well, I probably could throw out an action, actually. But I'll stand by it. So, without any further ado, let me go ahead and flip this thing around. Alright, here we go. Time for my Piss Tour Sports uh, DVD collection. Alright, first I got Stone Cold Said So. Is that glare or what? My god. Uh, yes, found this in the uh, $5 bin. I'm not passing up a cheap wrestling DVD. So uh, yeah, found this and uh, it's uh, really old. Like it's a uh, uh, like '96. Like the DVD was like '05 when I got here or something like that. Uh, but from '96, and it, it's literally like it's Stone Cold in character. Like it's not like a retrospective DVD like you see a lot now interviews. No, it's literally like it's Stone Cold being Stone Cold presenting this, and that's pretty funny actually. It's pretty entertaining. And then like there's even credits at the end. And but it's all Stone Cold, so it's like directed by Stone Cold, written by Stone Cold, everything. And then sure enough, it gets down to like hair, and he's like, "I'm bald, jackass, dude." It's it's funny. I don't know, uh, but yeah, it just basically highlights uh, his career at that point. It's like ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, just basically, it's him as a heel. So yeah, I guess it's still just ninety six. But uh, yeah, really, really dug that. All right, this next one, I actually got two of these. Well, not the same one, but. Two different types, but uh, I won this in a contest. I won Neil through, and uh, it's the Chikara. And this is the uh, the Great Escape, and the other one, uh, give them the axe. I think is what it's called. I can't quite remember, but anyways, uh, I got uh, I got both of them. Uh, actually, I co won a uh, contest on you know he was given, so I got you know this and the other one. And, uh, yes, uh, independent wrestling, it kind of got like a lucha feel to it, and, uh, yeah, really dug it, and, uh, like I said, that's one thing is, like, I, I have a, I think most wrestling fans do too, that have been to independent shows, is you do kind of have, like, this, like, warm spot in your heart for indie shows, because, you know, yeah, don't get me wrong, you know, going to, like, a Monday Night Raw, or Nitro, or whatever, that shows how old I am, because I remember going to Nitro, but, uh, you know, and they're great. I mean, I wouldn't trade those memories in for anything. But it's something about being in a gymnasium or at like some rec center, and you're, you're, you're almost you're always guaranteed to get a, a pretty good seat. That's all there is to it. Like you will not be in the nosebleed. You know, the nosebleed is technically like you know what ten bleachers up. Come on, it's great. And dude, if you get a good independent show, dude, I mean they they give it 120 percent like every fucking time. So I mean, it's like oh, this is a different vibe and there's different energy, and this is. That in a heartbeat. I mean, this definitely this, this sums it up right here. I mean, this literally is just, just really. It's just I don't know. It's just really great to watch. Uh, I didn't, I didn't recognize hardly any. I recognized the heartthrobs because they had a stint in WWE, and uh, uh, I want to say I recognize someone else. Uh, Quackenbush. Uh, yeah, I can't think of his first name. I just see Quackenbush. Mike Quackenbush maybe. 
Uh, anyway, but the main event here was uh, Eddie Kingston and Sarah Del Rey, and it was a. Uh, I guess I mean I don't know much about Chikara in general, so I don't know like backstories like that. But I mean, I'm guessing she was kind of like the China of the group, where she just kind of came in, she can compete with the men and everything. Uh, and it was it was solid. I mean, it was a solid event all around. So once again, Owen Neal, thank you very much. I you know I just haven't got a chance to watch the other one yet, but I do plan on watching it. So. All right, I got these. These were during the no. This wasn't during this whole. I'm jumping for DVD. I just, I'm, like I said, I was a huge wrestling fan back in the day. And not even that long ago, 07, I'd say. Whenever Chris Benoit died, that's when I quit watching wrestling. Wrestling was dead to me when he died. Not because of that, but just because it, I don't know. It felt like time. Like you know what? I'm guess I'm moving on now. If he's gone, I guess I'll move on. But anyways, you know, but there's only a part of me that will always be a wrestling fan. And anyways, so I, you know, I found these, and this was before, I mean, you mentioned that, but anyways, uh, if I ever see any kind of cheap wrestling deal, I'll just pick them up, I mean, I just, I'm still a fan, I got these, this is a Grand Masters of Wrestling, uh, Volume 1 and 2, boom, uh, I've seen other people have these things, uh, yeah, I mean, basically just, like, all the old school, like, superstars of the 80s, and this was, I'm pretty sure this was filmed probably, like, 96, 97, anyways, there was, a. Um, yeah, just them, uh, a lot of these, uh, so they had a couple independent dudes thrown in there, but for the most part, it's like all these old school wrestlers. Uh, not bad. I like the, <laughs> I thought it was kind of, I mean, it's very racist, I'll tell you that, but uh, which one is it? There it is, yeah, it's uh, on volume two, the main event, because it's like a Jewish-owned company, and of course, the uh, like the I guess the top star there is the Mighty Maccabee, and this dude's just very skinny, and just, not the best wrestler at all. Like, for those who are like, want to attack how fake wrestling is, watch this guy. Anyways, he's the champion of the company, and he's fighting the Iron Sheik. But dude, the Sheik does these interviews, dude, and like, he drops like hard J's the whole time, dude. Like, it's it's so ruthless. I mean, I don't think he was meaning to be racist about it. Cause, I mean, if you watch a lot of the old school promos from like the 70s and earlier, like 50s and 70s, there was a lot of like, you know, racial slurs. I mean, I don't think they were meant to be racial slurs because, you know, it's we're in more of a PC type, you know, area now. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, but I think, you know, I actually just had that old school mentality, but he just starts dropping like hard J's, Jew this, Jew that, and I'm like, oh my God, dude, like, it's pretty ruthless. And then the match itself is just ridiculous because, like, Iron Sheik was, I mean, he was good in his prime, but it's like Iron Sheik where he's just getting a little, a little too fat and just a little too old and just can't quite. And then you get the Mighty Maccabee who just can't wrestle anyways. And it's just one of the most brutal matches to watch. Uh, it's good for a laugh though. So I definitely, I recommend it if you're a wrestling fan. Only if you're a hardcore wrestling fan though. If you're casual or you're like, you know, one of these kids who just likes, you know, watching WWE on Mondays and Fridays or whatever, you probably won't like that. But I don't know, I enjoyed it. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I don't really have a whole lot of rewatch value though. I think I seen it once and that was it. That was it for me anyways. All right, here we go. This is the one that people can will probably bitch about a little bit. Uh, amidst all the wrestling in my sport collection, I got the Karate Kid. You'll probably think to yourself like, you know, couldn't that be family? Couldn't it be action? And I don't know. To me, it just seems like it's I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be family, but to me, I don't know. It was never a movie I grew up on. Like I always do that Karate Kid. I like the Karate Kid, but it just seems like like my family selection selection just kind of like it had to feel. I've mentioned this before. I've done this collection. My whole thing is, is based on feel, and I just don't feel like this is a family movie or an action movie. It feels like it's just a karate movie, and I'm just like, eh. Psh. However, if I had three ninjas, which is fucking awesome, it'd be in my family collection. I know. I'm weird. I'm fucked up in the head. But yeah, Cry Kid, good stuff. I only like the first one. I don't know. Uh, second one was alright, and then they just kind of... I've yet to see the remake. I've heard mixed things. I've heard some people say they really like it. Some people say they really hate it. I have nothing against it. I just have no desire to see it, so... This one probably should have been action. I keep thinking about it, but it just seems like it is more of a boxing movie. I only have one in my in the entire franchise. What are, there's six of them. And I only have one of them. Rocky IV. <laughs> USA! USA! Dude, I love this fucking movie. I am the most unpatriotic person. I think I mentioned it before, but fuck it, I'll mention it again. I'm the most unpatriotic person ever. Like, I just don't have the American spirit in me. And I, I, you know, everybody's like, you don't like it? Move. Well, if I had money, you know, who knows. But anyway, if I had money, I wouldn't care. Like, oh, yeah, I'm paid for shit. I have money. But I don't have money, and I'm just a bitter little fuck. Anyways, when I watch this movie, 
And I see Rocky go over there to Russia and knock out the Russian. Dude, like, I'm just, I'm waving old glory in my living room. I'm, you know, fucking fireworks going on. Dude, I love this fucking movie. It's the best. And I know, like, one has more drama to it. And I'm not bashing it. I like one. But I just don't, I don't know. I just don't, I like, just don't do one as much. I don't know. This is it, though. This is, this is, boom, the best one right here. Okay, I have... This is uh, Rodman Down Under. That's right, Dennis Rodman. And uh, we all know he had his stint in uh, WCW. Uh, here he's the, the, the hero. He's the face, the good guy. Uh, anyways, uh, they had a, I guess, I don't know, a pay-per-view or whatever. It was like some internet-based thing. But after like, WCW fell, that's when like, all these like tiny companies sprung up with like old WCW stars, and that's what this was. It was like IGW or yeah, IGW, uh, internet, uh, I generation wrestling or whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean it, it's not bad. I mean it has like a lot of old school wrestlers. It's almost like the uh, Grandmaster Wrestling has a lot of old school wrestlers on it. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's not bad. The main event though is Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, uh, up against Dennis Rodman. Not the best match, but uh, leading up to it, ain't too bad. It was worth the buck. I paid for it. Got Undertaker. He buries them alive. Uh, this is just a collection that has five matches. I think they got a couple promos on there. Of, uh, this, is, this, is, this is an old VHS, actually, that they converted. I think the other one was too, but this was like really old. It's like 95, I think, maybe. Because uh, I remember I used to have like these wrestling catalogs, and I always saw it in there, and I never did uh, to me, the only highlight for me is, uh, anybody remember the SummerSlam, I believe it was 94, the Undertaker versus Undertaker match, which as a kid, that's the most mind-blowing fucking concept, and as you grow up, you're like, wow, this is clearly not even Undertaker versus Undertaker, this is like Undertaker versus, it became Chains, I don't, I think it might be Brian Lee was his name, but anyways, it doesn't matter, it's a total, and it, it, it's not even that good of a match, like, it's just, it's, just, it's Undertaker just squashing the shit out of this dude. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's entertaining. I mean, it takes you back. He, uh, the five matches include, uh, he fights Undertaker, Quang, there's a fucking wrestling reference for you, Yokozuna, uh, Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just a wrestling fan. I enjoyed it, uh, but yeah, nothing special there. And finally, wrapping up the sports uh, saga here. Uh, this is a bootleg, and I don't normally keep bootlegs in the thing. But it's kind of a nice looking bootleg, and I don't even think they even sell this normally. So the fact that it actually has pretty decent presentational or presentational value, like I'm adding it to it. It's the first uh, WWF uh, pay per view, the Wrestling Classic, and uh, yeah, I mean you can clearly tell it's it's bootleg. There's nothing you know there, uh, but it you know it looks good, it looks damn good. I think it's probably the old VHS uh, thing. But they go ahead and they actually put the WWE home video. Logo on there, so that's kind of neat, kind of nice. But you can clearly tell it's a parental thing. Uh, it was the first pay per view. It was a 16 man tournament, and then you uh, had a um, Piper versus Hogan for a world title. Uh, and it's not bad. I mean, it's old school wrestling. If you're a fan of old school wrestling, uh, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. So I don't know what to say other than that, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it, it, it. He didn't like even it up on the two discs though. So it's like a majority of the pay-per-views on the first disc, and then like maybe two matches on the next one. I thought that's kind of neat, but uh, or kind of funny, but but yeah, uh, I guess they recorded it from a uh, WWE 24/7, and then put it on here, and then I got it for like five bucks. So yay me! All right, so that is my sport collection. Yes, I'm probably gonna get some shit for this one, but you know, I, mean, I don't know. I guess I have. I mean, I keep kind of underestimating everybody. I just feel like everybody's just gonna like take a shot at me when I can. And they really don't. I've actually had pretty good luck. I figured I'd definitely get some shit for like my film noir, my romance, my music, mystery, adventure, you know, my documentary. I feel like I, I just felt like it, the, the horror. I figured even the horror, but I was like, wow, well, really? You don't have anything. Uh, but no, nah, everybody's been pretty cool, so I guess, you know, be proler on this. Uh, we'll come back next week, uh, or not next week. Yeah, it'll probably be next week. I don't know when it'll be. It's whatever. Uh, the next uh, genre is going to be thriller. Not the, not the... Not that thriller, but, you know, thrilling movies. All right. Boom. I'm the Phantom. I'm out of here, guys. Later.